Hello everybody. I hope that you enjoyed that first video and uh, you'll notice that when I started I didn't actually start with the trumpet. I started with the lips setting up the embouchure uh, and today we're going to actually introduce the trumpet and how to hold it, you know, horn angle and etc etc. So um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is everything that we do in this video series, I'm going to try to get you to play with as little uh, extra tension as possible. So we're going to let your body be at, at its most at rest um, in, with everything you do. So I want you to start out. We're going to start out today with. Uh, I'm going to have you stand, and I'm going to see if I can get this camera to to show me where to, where to go. On. So if you stand with your hands at your side. They're going to be kind of at rest in this in this position. Okay, it's very you know there's no no real tension in it, and this is the place we're going to try to bring the trumpet to. All right, so I'm going to start with the left hand, and my left hand is at rest. Right, my left hand is at rest, and I'm simply going to put the trumpet there with as little change of that hand as possible. See that? Okay. Very simple. Right? And when you see it from the side, all I'm doing is just simply applying a little bit of pressure here and with this finger and we're there. Then we can hold it. Okay? And when you look at it from the side, you see, I have very big hands, which is <clears throat> maybe different than you. I sometimes like to put my, my third finger underneath, my, my pinky finger underneath the, the slide. Although it's, <clears throat> you'll often see me there too. But <clears throat> because I have big hands, I would encourage you to have your students not do that because it's going to encourage them to, to press. But this is just simply a, another, you know, it's about, about my, the size of my hands. So that's the, that's the left hand. <clears throat> And you see that here, it's a simple feeling of this at, rith, at rest, goodness, <laughs> that at rest, at, at rest position, <laughs> okay, and allowing the trumpet to be in there, okay, it just simply goes in, okay. So on the right hand, <clears throat> think about the Coke can. Now, a Coke can is designed for the average hand. And so if we're, we're drinking a Coke, it's going to be kind of this feeling, right? So I want you to imagine you're drinking a Coke. Your hand is curved. Your thumb right here is going to go in between the first and second valves. And right there, you have perfect position of your fingers over top of the valves. Okay? So if you take piano lessons, you know that they tell you to curve your fingers, basically because it's actually... <laughs> it's going to help them move up and down better than, than flat, but it's also got less tension. When your fingers are flat, you actually have to f flex them, and you're adding tension. So, so it's basically holding a Coke can with your right hand, letting your hand be at rest with your left. Good enough. And you'll notice when I hold the trumpet, it's to the side. It's, it's not straight up and down, because if I do straight up and down, I have to bend this wrist. Okay, this is very at rest. Both my wrists are rather straight. See that? Hello? And that's the position where we're going to hold the trumpet. Now, the next thing is the, this angle, okay? <clears throat> the angle of your trumpet. Uh, people might be unhappy that I'm going to say this. <clears throat> but marching band is really detrimental to trumpet playing because it's adding, it's asking for a uniformity of bell direction, which is impossible to find in humans. Okay, so <clears throat> it's looking for uniformity visually, which I get it. Okay, I loved marching band. In fact, my parents wanted me to go to uh, a wonderful arts high school in Michigan for my senior year of high school, and I. When they brought it up, I was like, no, I miss marching band. I got a senior solo. I'm going to be playing Ice Castle. I got to play a scream solo. I play flugel. I'm up in front. My dad put the, the 
the fog machine yeah i was never gonna give that up right so i love i love march band however <clears throat> the angle that we ask for is unrealistic and it's it's detrimental to most playing so <clears throat> the way we're going to find the correct angle for each student and each student's going to have to be this way okay and when band directors say put your bells up it doesn't necessarily make you sound better it doesn't make you sound louder it makes you sound more strained um because it's inefficient but what we're looking for is this okay take your 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 jaw and just simply open and close like your uh, uh ventriloquist dummy i have a Easy time acting like a dummy here, so. What you see is that the angle of this pencil is perpendicular to the plane of my teeth. So my teeth, because the top teeth are out further than my bottom teeth, the pencil goes down. Now, if I wanted to push my jaw forward, which some people do, but it adds tension to your body, right? It adds tension, and if you if you talk like that, put your jaw forward, you sound like Mr. Howell from from Gilligan's Island, right? You see, you've got an old New England, you know, you've just stuck up like tension in in the body. It's not very good, right? It affects the voice, it affects everything, right? So it's going to affect you both trumpet like too. So <clears throat> if you have an underbite, by naturally, okay. You only, only you're gonna you're gonna be able to tell you if you're if you're pushing your jaw forward or not, right? If I put my jaw push my jaw forward, I get this. Oh, lovey. We don't want that. All right. <clears throat> so this is gonna show you where each student needs to have the angle of their instrument, and it's not straight out. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time you're going to have students that have their bell that need to be bell down a little bit, <clears throat> okay? Now, if you decide to make them put the bell straight up, what you're going to do is you are going to take that angle of their teeth and you're going to bang the, the mouthpiece into the top lip, causing all kinds of tension, bad sound, etc. It's going to hurt response. They're going to have to blow harder. They're going to get a, you know, a more strident sound. What you really want is you want that you want those <coughs> lips to be getting equal pressure. And if you're going to have extra pressure, put it on the bottom lip. Okay, bottom lip can take it. <coughs> right? When we're buzzing, it can take a lot of abuse. Top lip cannot. Okay. So, because the top lip is really doing most of the most of the sound production. <coughs> All right. So we have our our horn in our hands in this way and you'll see that the the weight of the instrument basically rests between it's on my left hand the index finger between my two knuckles on my index finger that's where the horn rests okay you see it this way okay, it's resting there and in the right hand it's resting on the thumb it's between the first and second valves and with this with a triangle word, like perpendicular to my teeth, I can play all over the instrument wherever I need to go. Right? High and low, doesn't matter. <clears throat> so this is how we are going to set up your students. Okay? So the hands are relaxed. Hands are relaxed this way. Coke can right hand, right, between the thumb between the first and second valves. Pinky on top. All over. You can play anything you need to. So <clears throat> that is the lesson for today, except what we're going to do to get there is now we're going to bring this first lesson embouchure. Let's set that up again. And we're going to bring that to the trumpet. Okay. So start off with your M from the corners. Blow through the straw. And what I did 
this, I had moved, I descended from wherever I started down to that G in the middle of staff, which is your F concert. We can talk about why it's called that later on. But we're looking for to bring that, that buzz down to the G in the middle of staff and put it into horn, right? So again, feel that the trumpet plays a lot louder than you imagined it would maybe you're not make you're not blowing really hard you're still only using this much air right right but you're in the right in the center of that note as long as you're buzzing that note the trumpet will respond immediately <clears throat> so it's going to be another time we'll talk about about the physics of how the trumpet actually works uh, with you know pitch etc but for now I want you to practice getting to that G in the middle staff with your mouthpiece and putting the trumpet on at that angle, okay? And so you'll find that you probably buzzed at the proper angle. You probably buzzed that just naturally, okay? So <clears throat> do that a few times till you feel where that sound is most resonant. And I will tell you next time about why it works that way. All right. Hopefully this has been helpful. Take care.